It's a pretty heavy question for you, um, and it's related to a lot of issues in our community. Uh, there's a sister who's asking how she can console her parents about them constantly stressing that she's not married yet, and she feels that Allah will take care of it eventually. There are a lot of sisters that are, a lot of families having a hard time finding someone suitable for their daughter, or proposals aren't coming through. I actually went to a few states where a group of sisters that were in their late 20s, early 30s, we're complaining that we were told to emphasize our education and now everybody says we're too educated so nobody wants to marry us so what are we supposed to do so your thoughts on this inshallah no, i'd like to take the fifth on this and uh, i'd like to <laughs> uh, inshallah i'd like to defer this question uh, to sheikh abdul nasir inshallah if you can follow some good advice <laughs> And, and, and I can do that, no man. I'm the senior citizen on this stage. So some seniority, so I'd like to defer the question to Sheikh Abdul Nasser about this. Seriously, we're all really scared of you, so that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Sheikh Noman would have some really uh, great insights on this as well. But uh, <laughs> This is a ping pong match. Yeah, I know. That's, I don't want to keep tossing it back and forth, hot potato, but uh, um, I don't know. It's... To be really honest with you, we know people personally, family, friends. Um, I always tell people when, uh, you know, I, I was born and raised in Dallas, and when my parents came there, we were one of the first initial Muslim families. And it's this tragic situation that, like, the first dozen Muslim families, uh, with a lot of their children um, who are grown up now, who are my age or even older, um, the same situation played out, both guys and girls. Um, but obviously, because of the cultural dynamics, unfortunately, very unfortunately, uh, more of this stigma follows um, our sisters as they get a little bit older and older. The solution to it is a long-term solution. I, I wish I could give a quick, short, three-minute answer, but it, there is no three-minute answer for this. And we have to be okay with that. We have to understand we might have some issues. We might have some problems that are going to take more than three minutes to solve. It'll take more than three years to solve. I mean, you still have three minutes. So. <laughs> but this is, it's, it requires a complete reprogramming of our communities. I'm going to say one thing, because there's a couple of questions that uh, we're going to talk about this, and I was planning to talk about it at that time. I just got to say one thing. You might disagree. Please disagree, all right? Because it, 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 it elevates the conversation. Okay. But I'm going to say one thing. When we talk about what are your goals, what are your ambitions, why isn't having a family a goal and an ambition? You understand? It's a reprogramming. I want this degree. I want a master's in this. I want a PhD in this. I want this career. I want to work for a Fortune 500 company. I want to get a law degree, medicine, this. These are all goals and ambitions. And I'm not saying a sister shouldn't have those goals and ambitions. I'm not talking to just the sisters when I talk about this. I'm talking to the brothers. Why isn't finding a good spouse a goal and an ambition in life? So just like you start planning out for good schools when you're 18 years old, and you start looking at medical schools when you're 20 years old, why shouldn't you be concerned about getting married? Why shouldn't parents be concerned about their kids finding a good, suitable spouse? You know, the Prophet ﷺ said a good spouse is one of the greatest blessings of Allah in this world. Raising a family, why isn't that a goal and an ambition? Then when you sit here, I know that because many of y'all are locals in Dallas, I would present myself as the example. Sheikh Farhan, Sheikh Noman are from this community. Y'all can, a lot of the people in the community look at them now and their families now and say, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Well, it looks mashallah now, but it required somebody making family a priority to create mashallah. No, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. So why isn't getting married a priority? Why isn't it a, a, a goal and an ambition in life? So it's going to take, it's a long-term process. I'm very sorry if somebody wanted a shorter answer, but there isn't. And, and who says that you have to get married after education? Alhamdulillah, here in Southern California, I know of so many young couples who are, you know, 21, 22, they're juniors and seniors in college and universities living on campus with apartments. Like Sheikh Abdul Nasser said, there needs to be serious reprogramming amongst the parents. How can parents actually contribute financially, emotionally, psychologically as a support 
for children who want to get married while they're seeking their education? How can they help not just the groom's family, but the bride's family as well? Something really needs to be thought out of the box. And again, a three-minute answer won't do. This is a growing problem. And this is why we're seeing so many other marriage uh, singles programs out there. More I'm, and more. I, it's coming. I, I'd like to interrupt. I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people know or are themselves involved in any sort of crisis where somebody's not able to get married? Is not able to get married. That's pretty common. That's pretty much all of us, huh? That's wild. I and mean, this stuff matters, right? So we're all in this. So, uh, subhanAllah. Yeah, and seriously, you know, we're, alhamdulillah, we're having a good time discussing this, but I know many families who really cry over issues like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And parents who are experiencing children aging and not being married, they're very worried. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, help the unmarried get married soon, inshallah, and swiftly, inshallah. Right. Sure. I want to add on to this also that I, I live that, you know, what, what Sheikh Norman is mentioning, I live that student married life, and subhanAllah, those are the most beautiful days of our marriage. When, like, we had to take, like, 20 coupons with us to Walmart every time, you know, had to use, my wife had a scholarship, alhamdulillah, so she used to get, like, $600 in, like, subway credit every semester. So we ate veggie patties every single day, mashallah, <laughs> uh, for a long time. But subhanAllah, one of the things that we need to do, especially in our communities, I think that, and this is out of, this is well intentioned where some people come, and me and Sheikh Abdul Nasser, we have this conversation all the time, where people raise bad husbands and bad wives by spoiling them rotten. Like you raise your kid in a, in a, in a, in a mansion and hand them a Mercedes Benz or a Lexus. No, some of you aren't going to like that as their first car in high school. They've never changed the flat tire in their lives. They've never dealt with any form of adversity in their lives. They've never had responsibility or learned to earn for themselves. They're going to be probably very bad husbands and very bad wives. And they'll probably be, you know, 14 years old in actuality when they're actually 30. Okay, so I think it's really, there is value in teaching your kids responsibility. You know, back, if you read in the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu what the Arabs used to do, throw the kid out in the desert for a little bit. Let him learn how to fetch for himself. Let him learn how to live. So subhanAllah, I mean, it's almost degrade, it's belittled in our community for, for a kid to go out in high school or a young adult in high school to go out and get a part-time job just to learn earning, learn how to keep an account for themselves, an allowance for cutting the grass. And, you know, subhanAllah, my, my father was a university professor, very well off, mashallah, distinguished professor. I didn't know he had any money until I got married, and I'm being serious. So I became an adult. I was like, man, you make a lot of money, mashallah, you know, because... I used to have to cut the grass, I used to have to wash the dishes. We, we had an allowance for everything. And it was no joke. And subhanAllah, he said, because, he said, because I wanted you to be able to pay for your own wedding and I wanted you to be able to buy your first car. And alhamdulillah, I was able to pay for my own wedding, buy my first car, I was able to do that stuff. And there's, that's because he didn't spoil me rotten and just hand life to me. When I, when I wanted a, a new pair of sneakers in middle school, go work for it, get a part-time job. You know, fine, you make your own money. Then you start making your $300, $400 a month. And you know what? You're going to think twice before you buy a $150 pair of shoes. You'll think smarter about your money. So raising just competent people, and subhanAllah, aside from just the academic, I'd rather a person has a 3.5 GPA. And I know this is blasphemous to some of the daisies in the Arab cultures. And, but I'd rather a 3.5 GPA, but someone who's competent in life and knows how to deal with situations in adversity than someone with a 4.0. Uh, who who would run away from a roach as a grown man? Okay. <laughs> there are some dissatisfied wives here with their husbands running away from roaches, apparently. Mr. <laughs> Muslima, I I just wanted to add one thing that was very important. I think in answering this person's question, this is a question coming from a sister, who is saying, "How do I console my parents?" Meaning, I have become. I'm satisfied with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that up until this point it wasn't written for me to be married yet and I am I have a I'm in a state of rida with the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is which is commendable for whoever the sister is this is mashallah amazing um, but my parents are panicking and they're the ones who are worried and how do I console them um, and I've seen sisters who have been in this situation where the they'll go home and their mom is actually mad at them for not being married like, how are you mad at your daughter for not being married? Like, what is she ask? Do you want her to ask for the brother? I don't have a problem, by the way, with sisters appropriately going and approaching brothers. But um, 
it's, it's like they, they're, they're blaming them. And one mom had said something to her daughter along the lines of, if you were smart, you would have tons of guys lining up at the door. I mean, what, you know, this is, a, this is really interesting advice coming from a mother to her daughter, even in, even in a joking fashion. Because what does it tell her about her self-worth and how she's supposed to carry herself and put herself in a public space or an environment? Oh. So for a daughter who's facing this, where she herself, subhanAllah, has become content with Allah's decree and is waiting, is open to marriage, but is not um, desperate, but her parents are, um, what I would say is for you to politely give the reminders about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destining for each person their match and that match coming when that time is uh, right. At the same time, we tie the camel. So making sure that, um, you know, it's not just tawakkul, but you're, uh, you're involved in some kind of practical way of, um, cons you know, opening yourself up to more and more consideration processes, whether that's um, having your parents talk to the imam in the masjid saying, keep my daughter in mind for suitable spouses, or um, I don't know about the online uh, databases very much, but if there's something that's online that is uh, appropriate and not disrespectful towards the sisters or the brothers, but making sure that you are practically going after it without being desperate for it. And um, the other thing is that sometimes even as you're you know, doing everything you possibly can on a practical level to open up the possibility of marrying the right person, um, it's still not written for you to be married yet. And the parents are still behaving in a way where they're upset with you and they're anxious. Um, realize that at the end of the day, you can only control your own choices. You can't control the behavior of your parents. So be content with that. You've done all that you can do to open them up to having rida. But if at the end they don't and they're still sort of desperate for you or anxious, have mercy on them and realize that's just the way it's going to be. Allah, man, you're my